It's that time of the year where we start looking at some week one NFL lines. And in this video, I am giving you my favorite upset picks for week one. I got three teams that are underdogs that I think are going to win outright for week one. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to the NFL is that week one is always the wonkiest, <laughs> the wackiest week of the year. So don't try to make any sweeping takes, sweeping, ju sweeping judgments based on what happened in week one. Try to remember that it is definitely the week, uh, the weirdest, excuse me, week of the year. But with that in mind, I have three teams that I very much think could win outright that are underdogs. Real quick, before we get into it, if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And turn those notifications on so you get notified whenever a new video drops. So hopefully we can all make a ton of money together this upcoming NFL season. And then also, if you are interested in becoming a Jedi in training, I do have uh, two different membership options. It's the very first link in the description of the video as well as the pinned comment. So if you're interested in that, make sure to check that out. But let's get into these NFL bets. So my first pick for my three upset picks for week one is the Titans to win outright against the Saints. That is at plus 165 odds at points bet. So this is both a play in which I think the Titans are being undervalued heading into the year. And I also think the Saints are being overvalued just because they added Derek Carr. So let's look at the Saints. Let's start with them first. Drew Brees has been retired for two seasons now for the Saints. In those two seasons, they have gone 9-8, and eight, and they have gone 7-10. and 10. Now, last year was the first year without Sean Payton when they went 7-10, and 10, and they had the 19th, 19th excuse me, ranked team according to DVOA. Now, you're going to sit there and tell me, well, their quarterbacks were horrible last year, and Derek Carr is going to be an improvement on those quarterbacks. And I am here to tell you that I am not buying that. Looking at Football Outsiders, which ranks quarterbacks based on DVOA and DYAR, Andy Dalton was a better quarterback for the Saints than Derek Carr was last year. Based on both of those stats, Andy Dalton was rated better. So I'm not necessarily buying the fact that Derek Carr is going to be an improvement for the Saints and lead them anywhere special. Now, looking at the Titans, all they've done since they uh, made Ryan Tannehill their starting quarterback, all they've done is win. We all remember them going to the title game a couple years, excuse me, the AFC title game a couple years ago, upsetting the Ravens in the second round before losing to the Chiefs. We all remember them getting the one seed in the AFC two years ago before being upset by the eventual Super Bowl team, the Bengals. And you're going to say, well, the Titans were bad last year, so maybe those years are over. And that's true. The Titans were, in fact, bad last year. But let's, let's look a little bit deeper into their season. So they started the year 0-2. That's not great. They lost week one to the Giants on a uh, last second missed field goal by Reggie Bullock, and then they got trounced by the Bills. Well, what happened after that, after that 0-2 start, is they won seven of eight games. And that only loss in that eight-game stretch was a loss to the Chiefs in overtime, a game in which Malik Willis started the game, and he could barely complete a pass to a wide receiver or tight end or literally anybody. Then what happened was uh, Ryan Tannehill tweaked his ankle injury and the wheels fall off. They couldn't do anything. They lost their last seven straight games. So they started seven and three, then they lost seven straight games. But looking at this year, there's reason to believe that the Titans can take another step forward. And by forward, I mean basically back to what they were the past couple years with Vrabel and Tannehill. So overall, my logic here is I think the Titans are going to continue their winning ways with Ryan Tannehill and Mike Rabel, and I'm really not ready to buy the Saints just because they uh, have Derek Carr now as their quarterback. Next up, next upset pick for this video, we are taking the Steelers to upset the 49ers. That is at plus 130 odds at DraftKings. Now, this play is mostly a complete fade of the 49ers at the beginning of the year, not necessarily saying take their under win total or anything like that just at the beginning of the year. And also, I have a lot of faith in Mike Tomlin. All Mike Tomlin's done as a member of the Steelers, or as the Steelers head coach, is he's won. Even last year, when they had the horrible start to the year, they finished the year with a winning record. And that includes losing pretty much every game that TJ Watt missed in the beginning of the year. Week one last year, the Steelers upset the Bengals. That was the game in which TJ Watt got hurt. I'm also, I'm willing to believe that Kenny Pickett is going to take a step forward. That's kind of always the biggest leap is year one to year two. So we'll see what Kenny Pickett looks like. And a lot of the games that the Steelers won last year, he was their quarterback. Also, don't forget that Mitch Trubisky started the year as the Steelers starting quarterback. 
and that guy stinks. But the reality is, this is a play, as I mentioned, completely, completely fading the 49ers. Now, I get that it sucks that they had their two quarterbacks get hurt in the NFC Championship game, but I have yet to see a team cry like a bunch of babies the way in which the 49ers did after losing in the NFC Championship last year. It's on par with Sean Payton making a mockery of the league after that blown pass interference call. But at least that was a blown call. This was an injury, which A, can happen on any play, and B, happened because the 49ers tried to block the opposing team's best pass rusher with their backup tight end. Maybe don't do that. But to come out and just cry like a bunch of babies, I think is complete loser mentality. And it starts up top. It starts with Kyle Shanahan. Him, Debo Samuel, they've been the most vocal about complaining about how the season ended last year. And then the NFL changed the rule to add a third string emergency quarterback. But the reality is no third string quarterback was gonna go in and win the NFC Championship game on the road, already losing 21 to seven, which the 49ers were when both quarterbacks got hurt. So I personally believe it's going to take a couple weeks for the 49ers to get their heads on straight. The last time I can remember a coach crying this much in the offseason was the double doink for Matt Nagy when he made such a mockery out of that kicking competition the entire offseason. And it felt like Matt Nagy never mentally recovered from that. Now, I'm not calling Kyle Shanahan Matt Nagy. I am saying I think that the 49ers are going to have a slow start to the year as they try to just regroup from being a bunch of babies after losing the NFC Championship game for two years in a row. And also, let's not forget, they don't really have a healthy quarterback. Brock Purdy, who will probably be their starting quarterback, can't throw because he's nursing an elbow injury. Trey Lance, who they would like to trade, he might start up the training camp healthy, but he's nursing a gruesome broken leg. Behind them, Sam Darnold, and that guy stinks. So overall, I could not be more out on the 49ers to begin the season, and I love backing the Steelers to upset them in week one. And then last pick, my third upset pick for this video, we are taking the Raiders at plus 172. This is on FanDuel against the Broncos. Now, I'm not necessarily sitting here telling you that I'm high on the Raiders this year. I'm just completely out on the whole Russell Wilson experience. I am not buying the fact that he is going to have a resurgence under Sean Payton. I'm not a huge Jimmy G guy for the Raiders, but I also I ask, think he'll at least be able to provide competency, which I am not expecting out of the Broncos and specifically out of Russ. There have already been a little bit concerning reports coming out of Denver about Russell Wilson struggling in minicamp. Now, you don't want to make too big of a deal over minicamp because it's really not that important. But coming off of the year that Russell Wilson had, it is a little bit scary, especially the fact that normally all you hear at the beginning of the year before the year actually starts, they're all fluff pieces that the media comes out with. So to say that he's already struggling is concerning. And again, I'm not necessarily telling you that I think the Raiders are going to be good, but they did blow a record number of double-digit leads last year. Now, they still did not fare well analytically according to pretty much any advanced stats you look at, so I'm not saying that they're a good team with a bad record or anything like that, but I do think that it's possible they'll be a little bit better than people think, maybe finish with eight wins instead of six. But reality is I'm just completely out on the Broncos and Russell Wilson specifically. So plus 172, I think is pretty good value for the Raiders. Rounding out our third and final upset pick for this video, half unit on all these plays. If you're tailing me, make sure to comment and let me know. Other than that, remember to like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, check out the membership options if you are interested. Thanks for watching and have a good one.